Before our video, I have a little announcement to make. I was invited by Karen from the Sketchbook Revival event and I was invited to create a free online class that will teach you or show you how to use clay as a therapeutic medium um, to do some self-care. So if you want to watch that free class that's part of the Sketchbook Revival event, make sure to click the link below. I'm going to put that link in the description box. So check that out. But let's get into our video today. I shared a video previously on how you can draw or paint your feelings onto paper. And this video has been very um, liked by a lot of people and I'm really glad to see that. But I realized that a lot of us might want to really express our feelings in a visual way but have some difficulty in expressing that into a drawing or a painting and so i thought about it and realized also that the reason why we have this difficulty stems from two things and the first thing is um, we have this idea of an image or a picture in mind and we are worried that when we do put it onto paper or onto a surface that it won't look good or we have this kind of perfectionistic tendency and we tend to judge ourselves so it becomes very difficult to put things onto paper. And the second reason why we might be struggling with this is because of difficulty even imagining or getting in touch with the emotions itself and visualizing how that sensation might look like. Um, so even before we put anything onto paper, we might be stuck in the process of visualizing or just getting in touch with our bodily sensations. And the thing is that drawing the emotion or feeling itself is actually, a, if you think about it, a difficult endeavor to do because we're essentially taking something that we don't see, feelings or emotions are something that we don't see, but rather we feel or sense in our body, right? Um, we're, so we're taking something that we can't see and trying to visualize or make it appear or put it into something that we can see, right? So it is kind of difficult if you think about it. And I understand uh, the struggles that come with trying to draw and paint our emotions. So today I'm going to share some tips and guidances that will help you um, put your emotions outside of yourself to express your emotions in a visual way without being blocked by judgments or our thinking brain. So the most important part of drawing or painting your emotions or expressing it in a visual way is that we have to let go of trying to do things realistically. As I said before, we are really drawing something that we can't see. So we really have to <clears throat> not use our eyes, <laughs> but more our mind's eye or our bodily sensations or our intuition. So the first and foremost thing that we can practice is do more mindfulness practices. So what this means is that you want to really become aware of your bodily sensations so what you feel in your body as you tune into that emotion or feeling and you want to do this in a non-judgmental way so without judgment but just simply becoming aware of the sensations that you feel in your body or even the images that you see as you visualize so if you need some more help with that process of applying mindfulness, you can click the video um, link somewhere here <laughs> and this might actually help you practice that a little bit more. So the ways, tips, and tricks that I'm going to share with you today, I actually use these with my actual clients in my one-to-one -one sessions that I do online. So I really hope that this will be very helpful and make sure to try this out. Um, 
in a way that really works for you so if you feel like you want to try just one way one trick one tip then do that or you want to try all of these different things then you can do so do that too so um, take what you can try it out and see what comes out so the first tip i have for you is to do the activity that i shared with you in my previous video and doing with tissue paper so instead of using you know drawing materials or painting materials use tissue paper and you can tear up the tissue paper and glue it onto paper or you can choose to cut up the tissue paper in different shapes and then layer them and glue them onto paper tissue paper is great because it's not drawing or painting so a lot of times we have these blocks or um, these very high expectations of ourselves of what drawings or paintings should look like but when we actually get into collaging um, which is basically what we're doing with these tissue paper we have less blocks to doing collages or you know have we have less expectation of what collages should look like because it's a less traditional medium so try this out if you feel like drawing or painting your emotions was difficult for you because you had some judgments about yourselves or you felt like you were being very critical about um, your artwork the next tip i have for you is to use clay instead of the medium that we use to draw or paint the emotions so just as before, follow the same activity that I shared in the previous video uh, but just this time use clay instead of the color pencils or watercolor paint you used before. So using clay is awesome because you can actually express your feelings in a three-dimensional way. So sometimes um, that can make us more invested in our artwork or the art process and it feels more fun sometimes or it feels more stress relieving a lot of times too because we have to invest more energy into the material itself um, it's a more resistant material so more energy more investment <laughs> and more um, involvement with um, ourselves and it's really interesting to see what comes out when we actually work with clay and uh, sometimes clay can be a more intuitive medium as well so it, it might be more approachable for a lot of folks and the next tip i have for you is to do the same activity but using collage materials so these could look like different colored papers or construction papers that are cut up you can also use magazine pages or images that you print out from the internet or your computer or photos or postcards really anything with images so you can use these um, different patterns and colors and papers um, to cut up and paste it onto paper in order to express uh, or reflect your emotions that you feel inside and so remember there is no wrong way to do this really and the great thing about collage or using these printouts or magazine images is sometimes is that it's just more approachable for a lot of people who are uncomfortable with drawing or painting and so within art therapy sessions actually i do like to use collage when people are very um, afraid of trying out drawing or painting and collage can be just a welcome more welcoming medium for a lot of people because it's just easier way you just have to choose images and paste them onto paper but it can be as effective as drawing or painting because these images can really reflect our own emotions and we can see our emotions in front of us on paper and another tip i have for you is actually doing some painting but with painting i want you to start with just one or two colors 
So have a goal in mind of choosing one color or maybe one more color that reflects your feeling you have. Maybe you feel angry, maybe you feel um, uh, confused, then choose a color that really kind of represents that feeling and just cover the whole paper or canvas with that color and use this as a kind of a starting point for further painting or further drawing or further getting into the art process. So this is an easy kind of warm-up way to actually just get started with the art making itself and sometimes when we just get started it can feel easier to just continue the process um, a lot of times the starting point is the most difficult time <laughs> difficult point so once we just get past that starting point um, it just gets easier and easier so see if you can try this out for yourself and go with your intuition and your gut feeling after you have put down those two colors or one color and another way i feel like you can express your feelings in a creative way is actually using words so this is not going to be as much of an image oriented process but use this as a starting point as well so the idea is to do a blackout poetry so basically what this means is you take a page of a book Preferably a book that you don't mind tearing things out <laughs> um, that you're not reading and you can really get used books for very cheap at some bookstores probably locally so see if you can do that or maybe someone donated a book to you and you don't really really read it or you can use also magazines as well whatever um, thing that has words and sentences and paragraphs um, will work for this part so what you will do with that is you take a page maybe several pages and you look through the the words the sentences and paragraphs and just using a black marker maybe a permanent marker you'll black out a lot of the words on the paper and only leave certain words unhighlighted, unblacked out, <laughs> uncovered. And the idea is to choose the words that really speak to you, that you feel like will make a sentence, a poem, or will get across a message. And because we are really focusing on our feelings and expressing our emotions, I want you to uh, pick out the words that really kind of resonate with you um, on an emotional level. So whatever words kind of reflect your emotional state or your feelings, um, leave those words out as you black out the rest of the page. So when you have done that, you'll see a collection of words that Kind of string together or they'll make a little poem in a way and this is one way that we can creatively uh, express our feelings and get in touch with our emotions and you can use this as a way to warm up yourself or as a um, springing board so once you have that poem you can translate that poem in a more visual way so uh, maybe creating an image, maybe putting together some colors and shapes and lines that will go along with that poem um, is another way you can do this a little bit further and a little bit deeper. I know that this process of expressing our emotions and feelings in a visual way is not that easy um, and if you are really feeling like you're blocked or you feel like you really need some more support and deeper guidance into this process um, and also uh, get the support you need when you do express your feelings onto paper you know sometimes that is a problem once you actually put those feelings onto paper or on a visual way um, you don't know how to deal with that afterwards so um, this is exactly what i help people with in my one-to-one -one therapeutic online art sessions 
So basically we meet online through a video call and you can use whatever materials you have at home and I guide you through exercises, guide you through steps, um, guide you through the art making process so that you can be able to express your feelings and emotions in a visual way um, that feels safe for you and that really allows you to release those emotions and kind of um, change your emotions in a better way so improving your mood improving your outlook improving your perspective so if this is something that you are interested i invite you to join me in my one-to-one -one therapeutic art online sessions um, i will put the link in the description box below so make sure to check that out but thank you so much for joining me here today and i hope that these tips that i shared with you um, are helpful to you or useful to you <laughs> so please come back to this video if you need to watch it once more and try these exercises or tips out but thanks again i will see you next time with a new video bye